Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We are back with another update on our efforts to stop the encryption of over-the-air television signals. If you have not been following this story, the nation's largest broadcasters are trying to impose an encryption standard on over-the-air TV that takes authority away from the FCC and puts it in the hands of a very small group of broadcasters. Not only does this impact consumers, we're also learning now that this is going to impact TV stations even if they don't want to enable DRM. It is called high noon. That is not my definition, but what the broadcast conglomerates are calling it. And what it means is that after a date certain, they can take individual stations off the air by revoking security certificates even on non-DRM protected channels. There's a lot to unpack here, so let's get to it. Now this story comes from a filing in the official docket from Weigel Broadcasting. Weigel is an independently owned broadcast group. They have a number of TV stations throughout the country and they also have a nationwide digital network that runs on side channels on many other broadcasters. They reach 96% of US households in 175 different markets. You probably know them from MeTV, which is their most popular flagship, which runs a lot of classic television on over-the-air television stations. In my market, they actually own a station in Hartford, Connecticut. This is one of the low-power stations. And as you can see, they are very good at making efficient use of the broadcast spectrum. And they intend not to encrypt their content when ATSC3 goes live. And the reason is that Weigel actually depends on real viewers watching their television stations for their advertising revenue, unlike the direction the rest of the industry is going in where they collect broadcast retransmission fees, whether you're watching their channel or not. So Weigel has not been using DRM on their channels. They're also opposing DRM on the FCC docket. They've made a number of filings on that in the past, along with many other independent stations that are very concerned about losing viewers once this cutover happens. And that's because the receivers that tune into this encrypted content are so much more expensive than the current ATSC 1.0 tuners. And the whole reason why they're so expensive is trying to meet the requirements of the flawed DRM rollout. But what's worse here is that Weigel has found that even if a TV station is not encrypting their content, they still have to go through the process of getting a security certificate from the A3SA. And the A3SA, of course, is run by this billion dollar broadcast uh, TV conglomerate. And these folks can set the rules and these rules are under NDA. So the second the station goes to them to get the certificate so they can stay on the air, the A3SA puts them under an NDA where they can't talk about the rules at all. The independent broadcasters have no say in what goes on as far as these rules and how they're enforced are concerned. And a very small group of these member broadcasters can change the rules anytime they want and essentially pull somebody off the air. Now, how can they do that if the broadcaster has an FCC license? Well, the reason is, is that all of the certified tuners have to go dark if a TV station is not broadcasting its signature that comes from that certificate that they can only get from the A3SA under an NDA. And so Weigel did a test in a lab where they took out a bunch of televisions and they sent these TVs a signal that wasn't signed and most of them denied access to the channel by the viewer. Sometimes they could tune off and come back in, but it puts a big message up on the screen here that says they can't get access to the television station. And so in short, the broadcaster certification role is usurped by the A3SA, which is normally an FCC function, and they're going to force broadcasters into an agreement with the A3SA as a precondition of transmitting in the new ATSC3 format, even if a broadcaster has no intention of implementing DRM and even for programming that is not DRM protected. So why haven't we seen this out in the wild yet? Well, the reason is, is that it hasn't yet been implemented but the broadcasters have been calling this effort high noon and the high noon date was supposed to be June 30th of this year, but they delayed it in March for reasons Weigel says that are not clear to us. And of course, none of us will know because it's all under NDA. However, I think the pressure that we've been putting on the broadcasters and the FCC to look at this DRM issue closely is probably why it hasn't been turned on just yet. 
But once they flick the switch, it is going to create a lot more problems out there. And if it becomes part of the standard, the FCC is essentially ceding its authority over to private corporations at the expense of the little guys. So these corporate oligopolies continue to grow and take over everything in the economy, including our right to watch television over the public airwaves that we own. So why are the broadcasters implementing this? Well, this goes back to some of the initial reasons for DRM, which is that they're concerned about deep fakes and broadcast hijacking. But if you read a little further into the statement from Pearl TV, the real reason is about having TV stations redistributed without their permission. Now, they also note that courts have shut down those schemes like Locast, so they have the full weight and power of the U.S. government to shut down all of these things that they're concerned about, but that's not enough. They have to make it even more difficult by encrypting the public airwaves and essentially taking them over by a private opaque process that puts everybody under an NDA. And I went back and looked, when was the last time a TV station was actually legitimately hijacked? When was the signal taken over by somebody else? The best example I could find, and the only one, uh, was this one from 1987, where uh, some criminals took over a microwave feed in Chicago and replaced it with this homemade uh, Max Hedrum thing. They were able to do it a couple of times. They never caught the people that did it. And what they did is they essentially uh, overpowered the microwave signal that was going from the studio in Chicago to their transmitter. So they were able to get in before it transmitted, and that was how it got out. And as you can see, the anchor there is like, what the heck just happened? So I did go back and look at other examples, and most of them uh, were mistakes that happened within the TV station's transmitting facilities. Uh, there are really no examples beyond what I just showed you of a signal getting legitimately hijacked. It is really hard to do. You have to have a lot of technical expertise, a lot of power to broadcast that signal, and it's just not something that is easily done. Now, you could, of course, hack into the TV station, but again, that will put you before the encryption and signing. So I think it would be possible to do that even with this signature, and that's probably the way people would go about hijacking a signal. Now, there was a more recent example of an emergency alert system getting hijacked on a couple of different uh, TV stations in the country here. And what happened here was that the hackers went and downloaded the manuals for this EAS system, and they were able to log in with the default credentials because the TV station never changed them. So this wasn't an example of something legitimately being hijacked so much as it was very poor security on the part of the TV stations. So I can't see a reason for this. There's also no reason for DRM because it doesn't work, but this is the high noon that broadcasters want to impose upon us. But hopefully the FCC will be getting the message that this is not rolling out the way it should have. And it has led to more expensive tuners. It has led to very little consumer adoption of this new standard, which is better uh, beyond the DRM. Uh, for consumers and we're at a point now where we have to do something to move this transition along and i think the only way to do it at this point is to not allow drm on the public airwaves that will do it for this one let me know what you thought down in the comments below and until next time this is lon seidman thanks for watching and we will continue tracking this story for you